After you calculate your flow accumulation, you get a raster that looks like this often. So there'll be a dark or one color background, and you'll faintly see the outline of what looks like your stream network. And as you zoom in, you can see it better. These are one pixel wide, and these are the high flow values. But since you have such a range from zero, a cell that receives no flow at all, to the ones here they're receiving from almost the entire area, the stretch doesn't appear to really show your data very well. Now you can monkey with the stretch a little bit. So you can basically, rather than stretch it, you can classify your data. And it starts with this Jenks natural break, and it's a little better. And if we go to fewer classes, it maybe even looks a little better so far. But we can actually go into this and in the table below here, type in threshold. So if I type in 50,000 here in the bottom, and then I turn that threshold, that color for that threshold to no color, you can see a little bit better just the line work for the stream. Now I can do that maybe for display. The problem is that as you zoom out, it's only one pixel wide. And sometimes you also want the stream network. So while this is a cosmetic approach to fixing that inability to see where the high flow areas are, I can actually create a vector layer from my flow accumulation layer using the reclass tool. So if I look for reclass here and I'll reclass in the spatial analyst tool or in, in the uh, 3D tools an input raster and it's my flow accumulation raster that I'll reclass and I'll use the value field. That's the value that contains the number here of the flow. And I can actually type in the values here. So I can type 50,000. So anything between 1 and 50,000, it'll give no data. That's the background color. And I don't want any data there, but I have to type it right, of course. Um, and then from 50,000 to the highest one it finds, I can give it a value of 1 and then no data where there's no data. And I'm going to have this reclass flow too as the output. So I'll go ahead and run that. And it looks at each of the cells and gives no data to everything but the high valued ones. Again, it's still a raster data set. So I still have the same issue. I can't see it until I zoom in. But then I can do a raster to polyline. And this raster to polyline converts the input raster, this reclass flow too, using the value field I just created with background values of no data to a set of polylines. I can let it simplify the polylines, which means the little squiggles aren't there. And so now I have this vector data set. It says raster to reclass, but it's a vector data set. I can see that if I zoom in. And also, if I go ahead and right click and go to the symbology, and then on the symbology, I can click to change the symbology to a different color and something thicker. And then if I apply, I see, yeah, now I do in fact have my streams represented here with that threshold. And so if I need them for some other analysis or to better locate my points before I do my snap to pour points, then I have a vector layer.